we're a, a small web agency from Montreal. It's called Desonier Simar. I'm Elise Desonier, and that's Alexandre Simar. You understand the, the name. Uh, we've been working together for many years, but officially funded uh, our agency last year, summer 2014. And uh, we were so happy to have uh, a name and a logo and everything that we had nice pens made with our logo. And we will gi be giving uh, some away today. Uh, we're not telling you how you can win them. It's like a scavenger hunt or something like that. And, um, but uh, you will, you might sting here for the whole hour. You have chances to win beautiful <laughs> pens. If you fall asleep, might also um, work. Um, as you can tell, uh, we're not uh, native English speakers. Um, and that's a good thing because we're going to talk about multilingual content in WordPress. In fact, when I started giving lectures in English, I decided to give this warning in the beginning. And that might also apply for today. So when I say other, I don't mean other, but I mean other. So you kind of get the story, yes. <laughs> so we're not talking about this animal. We're talking about other things today. So um, 2014 was uh, an important year because we started our company, but also uh, because for the first time in history, the non-English downloads of WordPress surpassed the English downloads. So um, as WordPress will continue to uh, democratize publishing. Hopefully, download stats will look like this, with a uh, mandarin, like a big, big ball in the middle, in the middle, in the Portuguese, and English not being the only language out there, and French is somewhere there. Um, problem is uh, that um, uh, many countries, like Canada, for instance, are multilingual. Uh, you all know that. So Belgium, Canada, and other countries are officially multilingual. Um, and other countries, such as, as France, have a sizable population um, that do not speak uh, the official language. So there's obviously a need for a multilingual website. Problem is, um, well, in WordPress, it's not that simple to make multilingual content. Uh, the first line of the codex makes it clear, WordPress do not support a bilingual or multilingual blog out of the box. So that's a problem. What do you do? Uh, we'll come back to that in a few minutes. So by the end of the talk, you should get the answer of what to do with WordPress. Um, but before, let's talk about multilingual content in general. So we like to see multilingual um, as a matter of accessibility. So um, there's often talks about um, the accessible web. And uh, the principle of web accessibility refers to uh, the practice of removing barriers that prevent access to some people or group of people. So when websites are correctly designed, developed, edit, uh, all users have equal access to information and uh, functionality. That's good. Of course, speaking Japanese has nothing to do with being blind. Uh, it's not handicap. But I really, really think that we should see multilingualism as a matter of accessibility. And so for the next few minutes, we'll go through few, a few good practices and advice, and also a few really bad practices and things you should not repeat. So if there's only one thing you should remember from this talk is no automated translation ever, 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 ever. So basically, if you don't want to translate your content, don't do it. Just don't do it. Keep your website in English only. Uh, everybody knows how to use Google, so everybody can Google translate their content themselves. And even Google agrees with me on this. Uh, the quotation there is from Google. Um, they recommend that you do not allow automated translation to get indexed because they can be viewed as spam. And Google ads, and Google is right. I always say Google is more bright than I am. So Google says if your user can't understand an automated translation 
or if it feels artificial to them, you should ask yourself whether you really want to present this kind of content to them. So either you hire a professional translator or you don't do it. So that's simple. Another thing is that flags are not language. And that thing, we see it all over the place. I speak French, but I'm not French. And I hate seeing the French flag for French language. Um, so don't use flags as language switcher. Never, never, never. And that's stupid. I mean, a single country can have multiple languages, and your visitors are not flag spotters. And we're making fun with French and the French flag and all of that, but think about China. Um, there is two types of Chinese characters, uh, simplified and traditional. Uh, simplified in China, traditional Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan. So how is a flag supposed to represent those nations? Would people from Singapore know that they should like click on the Taiwan flag or something? No, just don't use flag as language switcher. Instead, provide a list of uh, language names in the na native language. I often see uh, sites with English, French, Spanish. Of course not. Use uh, English, Espanol, Dutch, <laughs> Dutch, something like, uh, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't say German and English, so that's, you I said English, French, Spanish. So okay, you would, you yeah. You say English, and I'll say Espanol. That's it. So <laughs> use it in the native language. Uh, this example is perfect. Everybody uh, looking for uh, the Spanish translation will know to click on Espanol. Uh, if you want an icon, uh, use a neutral one. Uh, this one won a design prize, I think, two years ago. So by clicking there, you wouldn't know that you would like have some kind, uh, some kind of a language switcher. Um, maybe you can also use a globe, for instance. People will understand that a globe is something uh, referring to um, localization. Another thing is to uh, adapt the layout of your website to the language direction. Uh, it might seem obvious if you, if you speak those two languages. Um, this uh, example is the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's not a website I visit on a daily basis. It's, I was just preparing this presentation. Uh, on the left side, you have the Persian version. On the right side, it's the English version. A uh, person reads from right to left, while uh, English reads from left to right. And as you can see on the website, everything uh, is switched. So the navigation is switched on both sides. The, um, the content is also uh, switched, so like the slider is on the other side and everything. So it's something you need to think about when you're translating your content, the way we read the content. Um, another thing is um, that uh, you should adjust your font size to the language. Um, this is English size 18, and then Arabic size 18, and Japanese size 18. Uh, I don't think we have data showing that Arabic people have better eyes than English speakers. So uh, <laughs> put your font bigger if you're using those uh, characters. Again, it seems obvious, but uh, maybe not. And um, don't mix and match language inside of a single URL. Uh, you should always, always, always use only one language per post or page. Uh, if you need to, uh, to code in another language, use the lang attribute like we have here. So it's a, a block code with, in French. Think, uh, Anybody understand my joke there? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's written that this is a boring presentation. <laughs> it's, um, it's helpful for uh, Google and also for blind people that are using help for reading. So Google needs to know in what language is your content. And if you are using help for um, navigating the web, uh, like. Uh, a tool that reads the content for you if you're blind, uh, that tool needs to know in what language is the content. 
Um, cross-linking uh, is nice to have. What is cross-linking is that um, if you arrive, like, let's talk about a governmental website in Canada. If I arrive to that deep, deep page in uh, the website of the Ministry of Finance and I click to French, I should have the same page in French. So it's cross-linking. There is no clear data on how often it's used. Uh, in fact, I never use it. And when we talk about it, nobody seems to use it. But each time we give this talk, there's always someone saying, yeah, I use it. It's important. And it might also uh, be helpful for SEO. So cross-linking is a nice to have. And uh, we will see in a few minutes how to do it with WordPress. Um, another thing to think of is that the length of word varies from language to language. Uh, for instance, French is 30, 40 percent longer than English. Um, and it shows in web design. So that screen grabs have been uh, done, I think, a year ago. And United uh, still has not um, seen our presentation because it's still like that on their website. <laughs> so uh, the um, original site in English as flight, hotel, car, and vacation. Then I suppose that the translator translated the content without context. So he or she wanted to be good. So uh, he or she translated hotel by séjour à l'hôtel and car by location de voiture, but it's too large for the tab. And uh, the two is tra translated by a destination de, too big also, so the layout breaks. Um, and that is something we see very, very often. So it's important when you uh, develop a site on a second or third language that the translator sees the context to, um, or at least sees the website after to make sure it looks fine. So that's like the basic thing you need to think of. Not too complicated, um, but the fun begin when we try to do it with WordPress. So let's try. Um, first thing is that um, we have uh, to um, make sure that the WordPress and the teams and the plugins are shown in the correct language for the visitor. So um, when you install WordPress, um, you now can choose which language you want. Uh, if you missed it during installation, you can choose it later in the general settings, like in the bottom of your uh, dashboard. Uh, once this choice has been made, uh, WordPress will download what they now call a language pack. And these are basically files that uh, contain all the translations, all the translation strings. So this translation will be used for the old WordPress interface. So you can like have fun and change your WordPress interface to French or Arabic just to, uh, to change. Um, some of your teams and plugin may or may not have a language pack installed or updated since the installed. So in the software update page, you will see a translation section. And if there are new translation available, you will have a button to download their st those translation. There's not much details on uh, which translation you can get when you click the button. It's fairly new, but all it does is grab the language pack that exists and, uh, in the repository and, um, and update your site. Uh, so if new um, language packs have been made available uh, by the developers in the repository, they will be there. So it's great. Yes? Uh, we're not still in two separate websites, so we're just in, in stage one. Let's say your website uh, is in English, and you want, yeah, you just want a pen. <laughs> so, so, 
So we're, we're just in stage one, saying that if you want your website in another language than English, first you have to download those language packs. But we're coming slowly but surely to having two languages on your own website. Also, just to add to that, on the users page, you can say what language you want WordPress to be in. And if it doesn't have that language pack, it'll have the ability to download that language pack if they need to install it. So you can change the language of WordPress after you install it. Uh, it should be in your user settings. So like in the users tab, my profile, you can change the language. Yep. Just to understand correctly, yes. this, is, this is not related to the content of WordPress. Yeah, it, it's only it's it's only WordPress, WordPress plugins and themes. So we're just starting there. Um, so that's fine for everything public. If you uh, uh, are using commercial plugins or themes, uh, developers will have to manage their translation their own way. So you need to contact the vendor to see um, if there is translation available. If there is no language pack available, or you want to edit the language pack, so let's say you're not comfortable with the French translation, or which, also, which is often the case, you will need a plugin. Um, the one we use is called Loco Translate. The name is written there. So Loco Translate is pretty cool. It allows you to um, create and edit language packs. Um, obviously, for local translate to work, uh, your teams and plugin will need to be coded correctly. And it's not always the case. Uh, so sometimes it will not work and you will suffer. So <laughs> that's. <laughs> so, well, if you play with other languages than English, you will suffer. Maybe not a lot, but you will. Yeah. And. Oh, yeah, we need to. Yeah, that, we try to limit the number of uh, speaker switch because we only have one microphone. So now I need to get this on myself, I think. Yes. Uh, and just to, to uh, add to what was just said, uh, plugins, themes, WordPress, all of this also outputs content on the public side of the, of the site. So it's important to have, uh, to have all the languages you're going to use uh, uh, on your installation because your your visitors can see, not just your admins but your site visitors can also see some untranslated string if you don't have it now we get in the meat of the subject which is translating the content itself and we're going to first uh, um, answer the question of what is content in wordpress uh, the obvious answer is the post content and the post title this is obviously uh, what is content but there are also taxonomies, categories and tags are the built-in taxonomies in WordPress. Uh, plugins and teams can create additional taxonomies. So you'll want to translate all of these terms that exist, uh, that exist in your uh, WordPress site. There are also uh, permalinks and menus. Permalinks, these are, uh, this is what determines the, your URLs on your site. And it's a polite and SEO friendly way and SEO friendly to have your URLs in the language of the visitor. So you'll want to be able to translate those. Uh, same thing with the menus. Obviously, you'll want uh, uh, the French website to link only to French content and the English language to link only to English content. Uh, if you're using widgets, there is some text content in there. Uh, there's obviously the text widget, which is just for text content. So you want to be able to translate the content. And all widgets allow you to uh, insert a title, so this needs to be translated too. So, uh, and, oh, I thought, I thought I was already at my... Uh, in the settings, you'll have a lot of things you'll want to either translate or adapt. One thing that is often forgotten is the site title itself and the site description, which is uh, often forgotten even in uh, English sites. You see a lot of sites with just another WordPress site as the, as the description. So you maybe want to translate this to uh, an autre site WordPress if, if, you don't want to, if you don't want to be original. And uh, date and time formats, this is not actually uh, translation. It's more like an adaptation to the country or region. Uh, not each region, language, or uh, language region intersection uses the same format for dates and time. So you need to be able to change this setting according to the language the, of your visitor. So that's 
what content is. So it's a little bit more than just post content and the titles. And actually, we're, we're not, we haven't seen everything yet. Uh, uh, WordPress contains media files. Uh, some of these may have text in them, for example, this one here. And you'll want to be able to translate these. Now, what does it mean to translate an image? It means that another version of the image with the text in the other language. Uh, how do you handle this in WordPress? Very various options are possible. And it gets really complex really quickly. We won't have the time to cover all, the, all that can or can't be done with media in this presentation. Uh, some images don't need to be translated if they don't have text, like the one uh, bottom right there. And uh, the toughest one to translate is actually the one you use uh, on your custom header. If you have text in there, you'll have a lot of trouble uh, having this display different images according to the, to the language. There's one solution that works. We'll, we'll see it when we get there. And this is, uh, this is the, 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 the worst part of translating a website. Uh, custom fields, most of, most of the time, you never see the, the, these things. They're either closed or hidden. Uh, sometimes the user can enter some stuff there, but most of the time, it's, they're used by plugins and teams to add the data, content, functionality. And there's a lot of stuff in there that you never see. Uh, on the right there, you have all the custom fields that exist for a single pro WooCommerce product, if you have WooCommerce installed. So you need to uh, decide what you will do with all this content. Will you translate it, leave it as is, or synchronize the things between translation? So <coughs> this adds another layer of complexity. So uh, the basic lesson here is that uh, the more plugins you have on your site, the more difficulties you're going to end up with, uh, with the translation and multilingualism. It's actually true even if your site has only one language. The, the more plugins you install, the more problems you're going to face. Uh, but uh, running a website in multiple languages will just multiply the problems you'll, you'll have. So if as, as much as you can limit the number of plugins, that this will help you. Uh, there are three main conceptual... I, 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 three? Three? Three. <laughs> three, yeah, not, not a tree, a three. Three main approaches to uh, having multilingual content in WordPress. And uh, this is where I get to show off my drawing skills. Oh. <laughs> so uh, the first one is to have each post contain all the different languages. Uh, so the big circle is your website. In the website, you've got an uh, X number of posts, only two in there, and each post contains the English and French content and Espanol, Deutsch, whatever languages you would add in there. Uh, the uh, plugin that allows you to do that is called Qtranslate. It it's been a while, it's been, a, it's been there for many years. It's been abandoned for many years. It's been forked and maintained somewhat by a number of people. And the latest version is called Qtranslate X, and it's for the for a long the, for the first time in a long time it's properly maintained. So it's something you can consider using now, uh, nowadays again. Let's look a little bit at sorry what it does to your website. First of all, in the list of posts of, uh, and pages, you'll have an additional column with the languages uh, that each post is available in. Um, when you're in uh, the post edit screen, uh, you'll, we, we don't see very well up there, but it's the same thing as here. You have a button which is more like a tab for each language, and this will switch content between uh, the translations. With flags. Uh, yeah, there, there, there are flags just to make it easy happy. Uh, and the little blue border here is, uh, is to indicate the fields that are translated, handled by the plugin itself. So. When you switch language, it's the content in the blue field that, that will change. Uh, this is to uh, edit a category. It's the same principle. You've got your tabs. You've got your blue, uh, blue bar to tell you that you, can, you will be able to translate the description and uh, the, the name of the category. Uh, here we go to the menu. And now things start to break apart a little bit. This is the same menu in English on the left and in French on the right except uh, some of my content has not been translated yet in French. 
But the items all show up in the menu, except they're like empty items. Not really clear what's going to happen with this. I can tell you that the, the menu will just not show these untranslated items, but the interface could be a little bit more clear to tell you that's, that's what's going to happen. And uh, here we're editing a text widget. Again, you've got your buttons on top and you can uh, translate the title here. But the <coughs> widget content itself doesn't have the blue border, so the plugin doesn't handle the translation by itself. So then you'll have to revert to using these little codes here that uh, allow you to translate any, and any, any field you want and the plugin will detect these codes and only show what's between, uh, between the, the, the language that you're currently viewing. So that is like the, uh, the fallback that Qtranslate uses for your content. Uh, a little bit of a pros and cons about this approach. Uh, it's definitely the easiest to navigate between translations because you'll be in the same post and you can just uh, flip between the translation. Uh, the, the manual codes that we just saw, they uh, allow you to translate pretty much anything in your install very easily. So there's no limitation there. And as I was saying, it's now uh, maintained properly, which wasn't the case for many years. So it's something you can consider seriously. And if you want to synchronize custom fields between translation, it's the easiest one because you just have to do nothing since the, it's always the same post. So the custom fields follow the translation, and if you want the same data for all, all translations, it's easy to do. Uh, I, in the limitations, there is a judgment call from here, from me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this design, the idea that we'll just stick everything inside the single field and filter it to just show the right thing, uh, depending on the language that's being seen. It's, it feels like a hack to me, I've never liked it. Uh, and the consequence of it is that it modifies the admin interface quite a bit. You've got these little language buttons just uh, strewn all over the place. Uh, the manual codes, even though they give you a lot of power, they're not beginner friendly. You'll, you'll need to find that, you need to know that these exist and how to use them. And uh, as of now, with Qtranslate X, you can translate URLs. So uh, even if you translate, for example, the, the name of a category, the slug of the category will stay in the original language. Uh, it's something that is in their priority list and it, you, it was fixed in a previous version, but doesn't work for them. But it will surely work anytime soon, but not now. Second option is to have each post be a single language and in the same site, and then have a post link between each other uh, for, uh, for translation. So in the site, you have each language separately with each, a bunch of posts inside. There, uh, in, for this option, there, are, there is more than one plugin available. I'm listing three, three here, <laughs> and, but there are even more than that. Uh, WPML is the granddaddy of plugins for this approach. It's been there for many years. Uh, Polylang, which I, I, I only pronounce in French, Polylang, because it's made by, because it made, it's made by a Frenchman, so it, it feels better to say Polylang. Polylang is the same concept as w, WPML, except it's been done more recently, so it uses built-in WordPress stuff a little bit better. Uh, Babel is also the same content, uh, co concept made by uh, Code for the People were acquired by Automatic, Automatic being the uh, commercial branch of WordPress. And uh, Andrew Nason, who's a core committer, said that if WordPress were eventually to do uh, multilingual in core, it would look like Babel. Uh, we do not agree with this <laughs> decision. Uh, and I, won't, I won't have the time to explain why today, but if you want, you can come see me after. Uh, we'll, uh, this, we'll be looking at a couple of screenshots that are from Polylang. Uh, if you use WPML, it should be very familiar. It ends up always looking the same. Uh, more flags on the top there to make Elise happy and to identify uh, which language uh, each content is available in. Uh, the icons tell you a little bit of the status of each post. Uh, the check mark uh, says that this post is in French, for example. If there's a plus sign, it means that there's no translation. You click on it, you'll be creating the translation. And if there's a 
pencil, that means that you can access the translation to edit. Uh, this there's, is. There's a question. Oh, sorry. I'm just wondering if this works the same for pages. And yes. 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 Okay. yes. I'm, I'm showing post, but you'll, you would see exactly the same thing for, uh, for pages. And you get an additional uh, meta box on top on uh, uh, the right that is all about languages, where you indicate uh, which language this particular post or page is in and uh, which other post or page it, it actually translates. <coughs> uh, for so category. There's a question here. Yep. So then do you have, like, what do you do to have two variants in the column in the French? Uh, well, you have this little, like, uh, Traduction. This is like the French interface. Maybe it's not clear, but uh, the second part of the box is for listing the translations of what you're looking at. So it's not a link to. You, you would create. You would create a separate post, indicate that it's another language, and in this field, you could uh, you could see that this is a translation of that post. Okay, but would that be done by link? Like, do you link the two? It, it's linked here. here. Yeah. Yes. And, and you'll be able to link them on the public site afterwards. There was a good question here. Okay, <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Just stretching your arm. Yes. If, if you chose to only have some pages in the open language and others not, would that? You can do it. Yeah. it you, you can do it with all any of the solutions we're looking at. Uh, it comes with a few problems that we'll speak about uh, in the end. Uh, so. Uh, this is to translate a, a category or a tag or whatever. Uh, it looks very much like the post edit screen. You choose a language and you uh, indicate uh, what, what, what are the translations. Uh, for widgets, you get a, like a little additional fields that allow you to. Oh, oh, these are the ones. Yeah, okay, good, <laughs> thanks. It, it allows you to show or hide a specific widget in one uh, language, so you can uh, the, you can like add add widgets that will only be shown in one language. So this allows you to translate fairly easily. You just add widgets in French and you show them only in French. Uh, this is Polylang, uh, one of the plugins I listed. Uh, WPML allows you to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, for menus, Polylang just. Uh, duplicates each menu location uh, by, for each language. So if, if your team has, uh, so this team has four menu location, uh, and now that we have two languages, we have eight menu locations, uh, four, four times two. So you just create more menus with just uh, the pro appropriate language content in them and assign them to the locations. Uh, this is a basic editor to uh, translate settings. Uh, there's, not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot that will uh, be there by default. And uh, it's just like the widget titles, the site title and description, and the date formats. You can have more strings available in there, but you'll need to do some programming. So this is actually a limitation of this, <laughs> of this solution. Uh, but let's look at the benefits first. Well, there are many options to choose from. You've got more than one plugin, so you get choice, which is always good. Uh, the interface looks more WordPress native than what we just saw before, to translate. It uses meta boxes and stuff that is more like WordPress is. Uh, you can translate URLs, since everything is a separate piece of content. They each have their own slug, so you can use uh, URLs in the, na the, the language of the content. Again, I think it's better software design because it uses uh, WordPress functionality uh, more than Qtranslate did. And as we just saw, uh, translating settings is more complex because you'll need to uh, have a configuration file in identifying which, which strings you need to translate. So it, then it, it, it starts to get a little bit ugly when you get in there. Uh, same thing for custom fields. You need like a mapping uh, a, a file uh, containing uh, instructions on what you will do with custom fields. So it's a more complex than when you translate. If you want to use WPML, it is not free. Uh, I think the basic license is $80 now. So you need to buy it. Uh, and Babel does not allow you to create content in any other language than the default language, which is uh, its main limitation and why we don't like it. Was there a question? Yes, okay. it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's free. It's on, it's on the repository and uh, it's been maintained for uh, more than three years now. And it's, it's the, the, the guy takes care of, of his plugin. Is it more French oriented or is it um, just because it's created by a French 
No, it, it works in any language, and uh, it's used all over the world, I'm pretty sure. We did uh, an English Vietnamese side with it, and it worked fine. Yeah. yeah. The third, third solution, <laughs> the third is really important to have the, your H in there, because otherwise it means there's another word. Uh, <laughs> So the, the idea is, is to have a single site for a single language. So instead of like mixing languages inside a single site, you have one site per language, and each of these sites you get uh, your posts. Uh, you can do this many different ways. You could install WordPress once for each language. You could uh, instead use the multi-site feature in WordPress and add uh, sub-sites for each language, which is better. And if you uh, want to uh, link translations in between themselves, cross-linking, as, as Elise uh, spoke earlier, you'll need to add a plugin. Uh, I've got three there. The first one is free. The two last ones are freemium. Uh, really quickly, it, it looks very, very much the same. You've got, again, your little flag on top and your icons telling you what is the status and what you can do. In the post edit screen, you'll be able to indicate uh, the translations of the, the, the content you're currently viewing. You will not have to enter the language of this piece of content because this will be part of the site settings themselves. So you will just choose a language one time when you're setting up your site. And uh, that's about what there is to see because otherwise you're just using basic WordPress. Uh, the main benefit to that is that you can use uh, vanilla WordPress completely, not use any plugin at all. Uh, and vanilla is the favorite flavor of all software engineers. Uh, if you're on WordPress.com, it, it's, it's your only option. You'll need to uh, open, register and open many sites, one for each language on WordPress.com, and link them together with nav, with nav menus. Uh, Mo is the solution that will be the most compatible with the most plugins right off the bat because uh, it's a standard WordPress installation and you don't have to synchronize stuff between languages or have additional language data for each post. And, sorry, all your settings will be easily translatable because you have a full site that you just need to enter your settings in the correct language. Uh, everything will be good. This is actually the only way you can easily translate your editor image, because you, you have a different site where you can just choose a different image. You, sh you shouldn't have text in the images, right? You shouldn't, but if it's your uh, company logo, sometimes, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, uh, that's why I speak about the editor image, and som sometimes it's used for the logo, uh, or, it's, uh, or it will be the logo, uh, an option for the logo in your team preferences and stuff like that, and then you'll have text in there. And it's, it's, uh, Limitations are that, well, if you decide to go the multiple install uh, way, you're going to, you're adding to a maintenance headache. Uh, Multi-site uh, scares some people. They think it's complex to install and to host. It is more complex, but it is not the end of the world. It has, it has become a lot more simple in the recent years. And uh, the, it's the solution that will be the most complex to synchronize custom fields between languages because you'll need to synchronize across multiple sites and not just between posts in a single site. There are solutions for this, but that's the most uh, iffy part. I think the key benefit to your, your multi-site is that you can do a lot uh, like more local targeting because it's just a yes. Yes, uh, that's uh, Elise was supposed to interrupt me and say exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> uh, but uh, in the the last two plugins I talked about are they're like freemiums. They have free version. They have premium version. There's are, there are feature missings in the free version, so just don't use them and use multi-site language switcher, which has everything in it and is free. But yeah, uh, it's better. Uh, it's it's. It, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably a little confused. So for two translate, wasn't that multiple sites? 
No, it's a it's a single site. It's just that you translate you all your translations are inside each post in the single site. Is that the WPML? No, WPML as each post has a single language, and it, there's a link between uh, between posts. <laughs> it, visually, it will look pretty much the same. It's just what happens in the back end. But what happens in the back end has an influence on what you, how far you can push the solution. But there's, there's pros and cons to every solution. Uh, I, I, I think we have just five minutes left, so I'm going to go really quickly. Cross-linking translations, that, and we'll take the questions after if you don't mind. Cross-linking translations, that's uh, linking from one specific page to the other. All the solutions we looked at will allow you to output this in a widget, in menu items, or in a, like a little text that will add be below the content, or anywhere you want with a template tag that you can put in your team if you're a, more a developer uh, kind of person. Some questions you need to ask yourself about this is, uh, what happens if someone goes to your home page, straight to your home page? Do you want to choose a default location for them? Do you want to use their browser's language preference? Or do you want to show them a, like a language region selector? There's no best practice there. So it's something you'll have to decide for yourself and with your customer. Uh, wh what do you do if you're on a page and there's no translation for that specific page? Uh, and you click on the link for French and there's no French version of that page. Most of the plugins will bring you to the own French home page instead. Uh, so you get inconsistent behavior of the, this little translation link. Uh, the other option they will offer you is to just not show the translation link when there is no translation available. Then you'll have inconsistent, inconsistent menus, which is not really better. So which brings me to my last question is, do you really need the page-to-page -page language switcher? Because if you just put a link to the home page in each language, you solve these problems. But in some cases, for example, government websites, you need to have this, uh, this done. But government websites have translations for each page, so you'll be OK there. There is a fourth approach, and I'll pass the mic. Uh, the fourth approach is uh, localization as a service. And what we mean by that is something that Elise will just explain. So um, the idea and uh, it, to add JavaScript like a snippet like this one to your site. And uh, what happens is that it takes the translation out of WordPress. So uh, it's used right now for services like Squarespace. So we're not supposed to talk about Squarespace <laughs> here, but uh, sometimes I cheat and I play with Squarespace. And uh, that's the way they handle translation. And that's pretty, pretty, pretty neat. So basically, and I'll go quick because uh, we're almost done. Um, but on each page view, um, the, we collect all, uh, all the text strings. Uh, they send it to uh, an outside service. The service returns the approved translation, uh, replaces the string with it. And if there is no translation, <laughs> it sends the job to the service. So one of those services uh, is called Localized.js. Uh, there's other services like this, like Bablik, Transifex Live. Um, Localized JS is the one used by Squarespace. So your translator would simply get there, uh, use their own tools that they're used to work with when they're translating. So they are not in the WordPress admin, they're just there, they do tra their translation. and. Uh, so all the translation stuff is outside uh, the website. Uh, there is a lot of benefits. First, like I mentioned, um, your translator will use their tools. So uh, their glossary, uh, their memory, all those tools that are used by translator, their workflow, they can use it. They're outside WordPress. Uh, content and interface are translated together uh, in the tool. Um, it's CMS agnostic, so uh, if you switch from Squarespace to another service, then you keep your, um, your tools and your translator do not have to uh, learn uh, a CMS. Problem is that uh, it requires JavaScript from the visitor. Uh, how do you translate media? It's not clear. 
Uh, how does it impact SEO? Not sure. I'm not an SEO expert, but I'm not sure it's good. Yeah. The only issue you'll get is with your URL yeah. that won't be translated. Yeah, so that's, else. yeah. Uh, and it's not free or open source. So we shouldn't be talking about this, yeah. but. But <laughs> we are wondering if it might be the future. So um, maybe we have one minute for questions, uh, but we will be around and we have business cards and we can have questions, but you're all wondering if you've won a pen. So um, the first person to speak in French was supposed to get a pen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she. The first question had a pen. The first correction. Well, so. Uh, uh, kind of answer the question for us. I think yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> and the last person to it's come in <laughs> won a pen. Yeah, because you were the last to arrive. <laughs> So um, maybe if you quick, quickly one or two questions before we, is there questions? Uh, well, no, we, I think we still have a bit of time. So. Okay. So your recommended method is, uh, I mean, do you like this with that, but otherwise you do multi-text? Uh, that really depends on the context, on the client. Uh, three years ago, we were using multi-site all the time. Now, uh, on many cases, we use polylang, so it, it really depends on the client, on the need, on the website, on the. So this is like a single translation, or what, well, well, how do you do this? Is it single or like a five translation? That really depends on the kind of website. If it's how more, complex it's more it is. It's about the, the features and plugins you have in the website and the number of languages. Yeah. And this that will help you choose your solution. Mm. Yeah, Google is happy. He has a website in French, he has a website in Spanish, he has a website in Dutch. Right. Uh, well, you have two options. Configure your site and subdomain, or another one domain, or just make No, no. That's bad. Don't yeah, do that. No, no, but, but, if, but we're talking about multi-site. You won't have that, so. But that's not how you set it up. But yeah. I will say, yeah. I spoke on multi-site earlier today. Yeah. If you're trying to do multi multilingual websites with a multi-site, I caution you. Uh, it is difficult. You are going to need a developer, and you're going to need a good developer. OK, I I'm totally disagree with you, so we could have a debate about <laughs> that. <Yeah. laughs> it's actually the easiest solution yeah. to do multi-site. It's the most flexible. I also totally disagree. Yeah, yeah. Commerce plugins for multi site think that you have separate stores. Yeah, well, uh, if you do a common inventory, you got a problem. I, I didn't want to get into that because uh, none of the solutions actually work like 100% well with WooCommerce or other equivalent plugins. So, it, this is a world of pain. This is now you're in the more plugin, more problem. If you want to do multilingual e commerce with WordPress, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.